pretty straightforward. All right, uh, for the first one, f of x would be sine of x because the derivative of sine is cosine. g of x would be x squared. h of x would be uh, x cubed. How about p of x? Negative 1 over x. Okay, negative 1 over x. And t of x would be x to the 6th minus x to the 4th plus 4x squared minus 5x. Okay. Can I go over the more? Okay, so this would be um, x to the negative 2 is how we could rewrite that. Um, so you, you really do have to think about this one a little bit more. But if you think back to when we took the derivatives, the only way that x group was going to end up in the bottom is if we started with an x in the bottom. Now, it's the negative because this one is positive. So if you think about that function right there, that is negative x to the negative 1. So if we apply our derivative rules, right now we explain that negative 1 is going to be negative positive 1. Subtract 1 from the x, that gives us x to the negative 2. That, means, that one takes more to think of than the other ones. So, really, you're just kind of working backwards. You're thinking about, okay, so what did I start with to end up with this function? We call that process anti-differentiation. Or it could also be called indefinite integration, but most of the time we call it anti-differentiation. Um, we're doing the opposite of differentiating. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at writing the general solution of a differential equation. So let's start with our definitions like we always do. Now typically uh, we use a big capital letter to denote an antiderivative. So a function big F is an antiderivative of f on an interval if um, the derivative of the uh, antiderivative is just a regular function. So that's just kind of notation there. Now, I emphasize an antiderivative for this reason. If we have these three functions right here, f sub 1, f sub 2, and f sub 3, and we took their derivatives, what would we get every single time? What are the derivatives of those three functions? 3x squared. Every single one of them, um, their derivative, and I'm going to try to think of what notation I need to use here. I guess I'm just use f prime. That one's 3x squared. This one is 3x squared because the derivative of a constant is just 0. So even though these three functions are somewhat different to begin with, they all have the same derivative. So that's why I put this emphasis of and antiderivative. There are multiple options for the antiderivative of a function. So whenever you find an antiderivative, you should always put a plus C on the end of the function unless you're given in additional information about the original function that allows you to find C. We'll look at that maybe today, but probably tomorrow. Um, but we call C the constant of integration. So I will count off if you leave your plus C off of your quizzes um, because you've got to put it in there. It's a detail that you can't lose because if you don't include it, then you're losing information about the original function. Okay, so anytime you take an antiderivative, you have to put the plus C on the end. Um, we call something a general solution when it has the plus C. That's the general solution of the differential equation. If we were given g prime of x is equal to 2x, then its general solution is x squared plus C. It's general because we don't know the specifics or the particulars about it yet. Okay, so... If we start with the differential equation, f prime of x is equal to 2, it's called a differential equation because it has a derivative in it. So if we're trying to find the general solution of this differential equation, then we're working backwards. If f prime of x is equal to 2, then that means um, f of x is equal to 
is equal to 2x plus c. That is the general solution of the differential equation. Now, if we are told that f, big F, of negative 3 is equal to negative 4, then we can find the particular solution to the differential equation. So I'm going to take my general solution and I'm going to plug in the specifics. So negative 4 is my y value, negative 3 is my x value, so I'm going to set my equation equal to negative 4 when the x is negative 3, and I'm solving for c. I'm trying to find the particular solution here. So negative 4 is equal to negative 6 plus c. When we add 6 to both sides, we get 2 is c. So our particular solution would be 2x plus 2. Now, if we were given a different initial condition, then we may have a different particular solution. But when big F of negative 3 is equal to negative 4, this is the particular solution, 2x plus 2. Okay. So let's look at some notation. You're used to, if you see d over dx of x squared, you know that that means to take the derivative of x squared. So from now on, when you see this notation, it looks kind of like an S, like a curvy or taller, skinnier S. Uh, that is called an integrand. That is called the integrand. And this is the uh, variable of integration. That does matter. It won't really matter to us for a while, but um, it's a good habit to have the notation correct. Y'all know that. Um, that's your variable of integration. So what that notation means is you're to find the antiderivative of the function with respect to the variable x. And since integration and differentiation are inverses of each other, if we take the integral of the derivative of a function, then we're just going to end up with the original function. Now, we did take the antiderivative of it, so that's why we have the plus c on the end. Okay? The integral and the derivative undo each other because they're inverses. That's why we end up with just big F. But we did take an antiderivative, so that's the plus c. Uh, and vice versa, if we take the derivative of an antiderivative, we still end up with that original function. Now, this one doesn't have a plus c on it because you took the antiderivative first, you stick the plus c on it, and then you take the derivative, the derivative of the constant is zero, so you don't need Okay, so we're going to anti-differentiate these functions with respect to x. Now, um, after a certain point, you can kind of start dropping this, but just for, for the moment, uh, when you see a constant multiple like this, pull it out in front of the integral, okay? Um, just so that you can focus on the, the actual function and, and what you're doing there. Okay, so, so if anti-differentiation is the opposite of differentiation, so when we differentiate, with exponents, right, we move them to the front and then we subtract one from the exponent. So if we do the opposite of that, we are going to add one to the exponent and we're going to divide by the new exponent. So that if we were to take the derivative, you know, you multiply it out, it's going to end up canceling. And don't forget the plus C. And then let's go ahead and write that as 3 halves x squared plus c. Now the good thing about anti-differentiation is as long as you know your derivative rules, you can always check it by taking the derivative. Um, so if you take the derivative of that, you would bring down the exponent, the 2's would cancel, subtract 1 from the exponent, that's where the 3x comes from, the derivative of the constant is 0. Alright. Okay, so that when we take the derivative of it, bring down the exponent, 
the twos are going to cancel and you subtract one from the x bar. So when you bring down the two from the x bar, the two there it cancels with the two in the denominator. So you get with just the three. That's telling you what you're taking the derivative with respect to. Okay, it's just the notation that always goes with the interval. I thought. Okay. Okay. Everybody down? Everybody? Okay. Let's do a few more. Okay, we'll do a few more. All right, so the next one, 1 over x cubed. Okay, we need to begin by rewriting that one as well. 1 over x cubed is x to the negative third. So anti-differentiation, we're going to add 1 to the exponent, so that becomes negative 2 divide by the new exponent and put our constant of integration on the end. And if we clean this up, we'll put the negative in the numerator, 1 over 2x squared plus c. Okay, so we don't leave negative negatives in the numerator or in the denominator so we move it to the numerator. The two stays though, okay, we don't move that, we just move the negative in front of it. And the negative exponent moves the x squared to the bottom. Uh, I would check the derivative right here. I wouldn't check it in this form because we were just trying to have to rewrite it. So if I took the derivative of this right here, bring down the exponent, the negative two is going to cancel with the negative two, subtract one from the exponent, that's going to give you the x to the negative three. Okay, it's anti-differentiate the square root of x. The square root of x. So again, we need to rewrite this so it's a power. It's just like with derivatives when we had to rewrite everything so that we could use the power rule. This is kind of our power rule for anti-differentiation. Okay, we add 1 to the exponent, so that becomes the 3 halves. We divide by the new exponent, put our constant integration on the end. That 3 halves in the denominator becomes a 2 thirds in front, and that would be the square root of x cubed. Okay, you flip over the fraction that's in the bottom, so that becomes the 2 thirds, and it's the square root of x cubed plus c. Okay, and a big one here, 2 sine of x. I'm going to move the constant to the front just so that I can focus on the function. Now, what would give us a derivative of sine? Negative cosine. Okay, because the derivative of cosine is positive, or excuse me, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so if we want positive sine, we've got to put a negative in front of it. So we would write that as negative 2 cosine of x plus c. Take the derivative of it to check. Okay. Why is the 2, why does the 2 not become an exponent? Um, because this isn't a polynomial. It's just, a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a because it's not a okay? Um, because it's a trig function, it's just move the, the two is just a constant multiple. Um, it would be an exponent if we had like sine cosine, because remember your, your trig rules, when you bring it down and you multiply the derivative of the trig function. <coughs> no, we do not have a product rule. That's a constant multiple. It's constant multiple, it's not a product. Okay, if it were cosine squared of x, take the derivative of that. That's 2 